All right, so we have the foci at 0, comma, plus or minus 8, and we have an asymptote of y equals 4x. All right. Um, so first of all, guys, the main, main important thing which we need to determine is this going to be a vertical or a horizontal. Since I'm adding, my foci is going to be plus or minus on the k, we know that it's going to be a vertical. Good. Um, however, let's just go and sketch it real quick. So it says plus or minus 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, the one thing we notice, ladies and gentlemen, is since it is on that y-axis, we also know what else to, oh, I'm sorry. Crap. That's just the foci, right? Yeah. Not the vertices. We don't know where the vertices are at. So, remember, though, that my foci, my vertices, and my center all have to lie on this, on this x, on this y-axis, because that's now called my transverse axis. Um, so I know that now C equals 8, right? And I can say that my center is at 0, comma, 0. All right? But to be able to figure out the rest of this problem, to be able to write the equation, I need to figure out what A and B are, correct? So we go back and we look at our asymptote. Um, which in this case, since it is vertical, do I have that written down? Yeah, vertical. So the vertical, we have y equals k um, plus or minus uh, a over b times x minus h. Right? And which one was this problem? Was this, Austin? Yeah, 20, 25. 25. Yeah, OK. So when we have this, well, the only thing they tell us is y equals plus or minus 4x. So what is 4 going to represent? What does 4 represent? Oh, a over b. A over b. So we could say 4 equals a over b. A plus b. A over b. Does that make sense? Yes? Well, that's not really going to help us because we want to figure out what A and B are, right? But I can multiply by B on both sides. And I can say A equals 4B. Not an exact value, but something we can get into. Now, why would that become important? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the only last thing I have piece of information I know is that C squared equals A squared plus B squared, right? So C squared is 64. Uh, that's going to be 8 squared equals, now, what can I plug in for A squared? I don't have no relationship for A. The only thing I know for A is A equals 4B. 4B squared. So I could say 4B squared, and then I don't know what B squared is, so I'll just leave it like that. So therefore, this gives me 64 equals 16B squared plus B squared. This is helpful, right? I don't want to solve for b for a value of a, but now since I both have a b squared, I can say 64 equals 17 b squared. Divide by 17, we can say b squared equals 64 divided by 17. Whew. Okay, so now I know what b squared is and I know what c squared is. So let's go back to it. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Eight, 8 squared is still 64, equals a squared plus now 64 over 17. So now to solve for a, I subtract 64 over 17. So I have 64 minus, what am I doing here? What shows this? C squared is 64, and this is, this is 6, is this 64 over 17? Okay, equals 64 over 17. Yes? But before I can do that, I need to get them to be the common denominators. So right now, this is over 1. So I need to get them to be common denominators, so I'm going to multiply by 17 over 17. So I have 17 times 64 equals 1,088 over 17 minus 64 over 17. So therefore, I get 1,024 
over 17 equals a squared. All right, so our final answer here. Now what we're going to have is, so now we know what b squared is, and we know what a squared is. And we know our center is 0, 0, so that's not bad. And we know it's a vertical, so therefore our formula is going to be um, y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1, right? I don't need to do the x and the h and the k because I know the center is at 0, 0. So therefore I have y squared over a squared, which is 1,024 over 17 minus x squared over b squared, which is 64 over 17 equals 1. And ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to write a fraction divided by another fraction, so I'll just invert this as the multiplication. So my final answer is going to be 17 y squared over 1024 minus 17 x squared over 64 equals 1. And there you go. Oh, this is all just one problem. So that's what you had to do if you don't know A or B? Well, yeah, because you know the relationship with A and B. So, yeah, that's what you guys have to do. Okay. Um, so, 